Today, on Commitment to Truth. Humility and the kingdom is synonymous. People cannot see the evidence of the kingdom of God without seeing humble people walk this earth. So when we pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my life, my family's life, my church's life, my ministry, throughout this world, simply what we're saying is, God, keep me humble. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we begin a series titled, The Evidence. We regularly hear the word blessed being loosely used within the body of Christ. We even witness throughout the world people seemingly with no awareness of the goodness of God. But what does it really mean to be blessed? Or what does it mean to live a blessed life? This sermon series will teach us how to become aware of the evidence of blessing and to safeguard the evidence in order to live a blessed life in Christ. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. Guys, you don't think when our wives finally get it and they submit unto us as unto the Lord and our children respect us. You don't think we have a chance to become full of ourselves. You really don't think when some way, somehow you grew up in poverty and now you're successful and you got more money in the bank that you could ever dream of that you won't become full of yourself. So, so let's not get it twisted today and say, well, I'm never going to be in third heaven like Paul did, but that's your third heaven. That's our third heaven. You follow me? When ministry starts excelling and, and God starts opening doors and, and, and he's multiplying your business and, and, and you're starting to, now you're getting your doctorate degree and, and life is just humming on all cylinders. You don't think for any second we won't get full of ourselves. And that's why if you skip down to verse 7 in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. Here's the response. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm well content with weakness, with insults, with distress, with persecution, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You see, at the end of the day, the only way we can reach a place of humility to be blessed, we need some of this. I don't know about you, I've had to have and still have to have many thorns in my flesh to keep me from exalting myself so I can remain at a place of humility. You don't think that's why God just allows you to have marital issues right when you think everything's good to keep you from exalting yourself. You don't think that's why he, he grows little thorns called children in your life? You know, they look like roses that could be touched and cuddled, but, what, you know, they grow up and have start growing thorns. They're like, what? wait a minute. Trust me, as a parent, I, I've, 
I've experienced it. And it's to keep me from exalting myself, to keep me from thinking, oh, this is how you do parenthood. This is exactly how you keep them all in line and, and make sure that they're perfectly honoring God and, and honoring mom and dad. And no, that's why something always jumps off. How are you going to minister to people and your family is all perfect? We're just a bunch of imperfect people trying to get it right. Would keep, which keeps us all humble. Therefore, the evidence of the goodness of God, the evidence becomes crystal clear, people. In other words, the beauty of God. Listen, when we, humility and the kingdom is synonymous. People cannot see the evidence of the kingdom of God without seeing humble people walk this earth. So when we pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in my life, my family's life, my church's life, my ministry, throughout this world, simply what we're saying is, God, keep me humble. Humility escorts the kingdom of God here on this earth that allows people to take a glimpse of him through us that is a blessing our humility should be the evidence of the kingdom of heaven manifesting here on this earth church make sense number two verse four humility then leads to this evidence found in dying humility leads to dying humility leads to dying plural, continuously. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This word mourn is to lament on, mourn for, to mourn the loss of a friend. But here's the catch to it. It, it is more painfully the loss of our self. You ever been there and you walk with Christ that you can hang out with him or her, you, God says others may, but you may not. We mourn that, church. As many times, listen, when you start getting closer and closer, you start humbling yourself and relying more on Jesus, right? And then before you know it, he starts weeding out friends. Our friends start saying to you, you're different. Something, you're funny. Something different about you. You're weird. Are you one of those weird, right? And it's, so, so there begins this separation between you and them, and ultimately you have to die. And if you lose mom, dad, sister, brother, child, friend, cousin, uncle, anything that you love dearly, you will mourn. You see, sometimes we think, okay, well, I'm just losing a friend. No, you lose a friend, you lose part of your identity. Especially if you're very, very close to those friends, and now they think you're weird. Now God is saying to you, you just can't be with your favorite uncle anymore. You just can't be with your favorite cousin anymore. You can't be with your brother, your sister, your mother, your father anymore like you used to. You don't think you mourn that? We mourn the loss because that's part of us that we cannot have anymore. But blessed are those who mourn, you'll be comforted. That's the promise. This word comforted means this, to call to one side, to call upon, which may be done in a way of exhortation, instruction, to admonish, exhort, encourage, and strengthen by consolation. You can also be instructed and taught. Therefore, it will comfort your soul. That's his promise. Is that when you become the evidence of, of the image of the living God because you choose to die to yourself and deny yourself of things of this world, he's right alongside you. 
Even when you're losing friends, he's always there. He's a friend that sticks closer to you than any brother. It's his promise. So, still, <laughs> dying is miserable. And that's why James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10, it says this. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, remember, most of us know that verse by saying, resist the devil, he will flee. Chances are, if the devil's still on your trail, or he's just so active in your life, it could be because you and I have not chosen to do, to do what first? Submit. Which is connected to what? Humility. Submit, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And verse 8 goes on to say, again, James chapter 4, come close to God, and he will come close to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your, purify your heart, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep, and let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy and into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. So just to debunk when... Preachers only give you the good part of walking with Jesus? No. Record shows by all mankind, it can be miserable. Fruitful, joyful, but trust me, when you start drawing close to the Lord, part of you will have to die. And you, I, we just don't like that. No one in their right sinful mind will like it. Something that you're able to do freely all your life, whenever you wanted to do, however you wanted to do it. And then you have this encounter with Jesus. And he says, no, in, in chapter four, he goes on to say, the spirit of God that he placed in you jealously longs to fellowship with you. And he starts getting jealous. Oh, like any relationship, tension begins to happen. But in any relationship for it to work, part of you has to die. Thank you for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We'll continue with the second part of the message right after this. Act like a man. Woman, can you help me? 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14 says, Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. These explosive words could and should ignite a sense of responsibility within the heart of every man across the planet, or at least in the heart of you, the reader. You can purchase this book and others by Cedric Brown at cedricbrown.com. Thank you again for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We now return for the second half of our message. But it gets better. <laughs> It does get better because he says, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will do what? Exalt you. And dying also can be lonely. You ever had that happen to you? When you separate yourself, you start dying to yourself. It's really lonely. And that's why Jesus admonishes us in chapter 12 verses 24 through 26 in, in the book of John, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears fruit. Have you ever experienced that? You know, once you finally gave in to it, then you start, fruit, you start seeing fruit emerge. So I, I was with uh, one of my former employees on this past uh, few days. And he says, Cedric, man, he says, I'm trying to tell other people, man, how it works. <laughs> he's like, and he's just so passionate. And he's now a deacon in this church and things like that. He says, man, before I lost my job with the company I was with, he got fired. He says, it was my job, my family, and then God. He said, but now is God, my family, and my job? He's now an independent businessman. He says, Cedric, I am more successful with God, my family, and my job than I've ever. I'll be trying to tell people you're doing it all wrong.
God, yes, my family, then my job. Dying is lonely, but when you die, you bear fruit. He says, the one who loves his life loses it. So we can try to love it and hold on to it, and there's loss still. We're in verse 25, John 12. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternity. Do you hear the difference? You'll lose it now here, but if you lose it, right, you gain it for all eternity beyond this life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servants will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. But listen, dying is necessary for a new life. It's necessary. That's why Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7 reminds us this way. It says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase far from it? How shall we who die to sin still live in it? You hear that? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? And this is the, the importance of baptism, church, as well. Won't go there, but that's an important passage. It says in verse 4, continues, Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For we have become united with him in the likeness of his death. Certainly, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For the one who has died is freed from sin. The Romans 8 verses 12 through 14 uh, challenges us with this, is that, that there's this living in the spirit as sons and daughters, but it takes the dying. It says, so then, brothers and sisters, we are under obligation not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you are going to die. So you follow me, the, the oxymoron of it all is that, no, no, I'm going to do it the way I want to do according to the flesh. You die anyway. And some of us have been there, right? It's like you tried it, you tried it your own way, and it always fails anyway. So you're going to die. <laughs> you know, it ain't going to work. So, so go through the hardness and the difficult journey by submitting to him and humbling yourself unto him. And that's why he said, but if... By the Spirit, you're putting to death the deeds of the body. You will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. And again, let's flesh this out in today's time. One of the biggest issues is not with God and his message, Christ and his message. It is with the sons and daughters of God. Because when we don't live as men and women who are dead to ourselves, dead to our flesh, we're no longer the evidence of the goodness of God. We're no longer the evidence of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We're no, no longer the evidence of men and women who are truly blessed. Think about this, church, for a minute. How many times do you find yourself, or we find believers in general, you know, teetering and teetering and teetering, and then it confuses people. Well, why do I want to go after this Jesus? And you, you say one day, it's good to be on his team. It's good to follow him. Oh, God has blessed me, and he's moving in my life, and he's doing X, Y, Z in me and for me and through me. But then the next day, can't even recognize us as sons or daughters. Many of you know Romans 12 says that we need to present our bodies as living sacrifices, right? On the altar of God, right? Holy and acceptable and pleasing unto him, which is our reasonable 
form of worship. I heard someone say early in my faith, he said, Cedric, one of the biggest problems will be an 11 sacrifice. It's because we keep taking ourselves off the altar. We won't stay on the altar. We must die to live. Lastly, one of my favorite verses in Galatians 2, 18 through 20, it says, for if I rebuild what I've once destroyed, you hear that? I destroyed all that, I died to all that, then I rebuild it, reconstruct it. It says, I prove myself to be a wrongdoer. For through the law, I died to the law so that I may live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. I do not nullify this grace of God for if righteousness comes as a law, then Christ died needlessly. It's kind of like this. If we just keep flip-flopping and won't stay dead, (laughs) if you would, it's like, well, did Christ die needlessly? We know he didn't. But it's our choice to stay dead. (laughs) I die daily so Christ can do what? So this dying church Folks, it's not one and done. You die today, you die tomorrow, you die situationally. Remember Jesus says, if if you're not willing to do what? Pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. You're not worthy to be my disciples. I heard someone say this, again, early in my faith, and and they says, you know, that imagery is like this. It's like Jesus saying to you to pick up your cross to the point of execution because uh, Roman law was if you're going to be crucified you had to carry your cross to the point of crucifixion so it's like saying the imagery that Jesus is given is that you must bear this cross and at any time that you have sin emerge from your life put that cross down plant it and nail it to the cross so if you're not willing to carry the cross, chances are you're not, really, you're not willing to do what? Crucify it or be crucified. There are times that we just and must nail ourselves to the cross, ourselves, so that we can live. Amen. Thank you again for listening to our series, The Evidence, from Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Through this series, we hope you are encouraged and aware of how to live a blessed life in Christ. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, We would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.